So, Gav, a little bit of a different approach to the Surrey Hill Smokers, put this informational post out. Obviously, the whole of the UK is on lockdown. It does kind of make it a little bit tricky for the Surrey Hill Smokers. Let me introduce everybody to Surrey Hill Smokers, my home office. Uh, it's not the smoke shack because it's too cold. Um, where are you, Gav? I'm actually in my home office, as you can see, bit of a tip. But other than that, you know, does the trick. So, what are we planning to do for the uh, fans and people out there during this lockdown? Because it's a pretty, let's face it, crappy time. Nobody can go out, everybody's stuck at home. What are we planning on doing, buddy? Uh, I think we're going to plan to do some sort of really nice sort of simple food uh, that we can do, you know, on a budget, for one. At the moment, people, you know, are very much so on a budget. But also just something that's going to be quick, easy, and even if you are stuck at home and, you know, if you just want to do something in the evening, you can. It's not going to take up too much time, um, but yet it's still going to be packed full of flavour and, uh, you know, what can you say at the moment? That's all you really want. Yeah, I think, I think for our viewers and our fans and anybody who watches us who may not be fans but just watching us, we want to try and alleviate some of that boredom. We want to try and bring you and get you out there, encourage you to keep eating good food because that will keep you happy. Uh, drinking beer also helps, I find, but that's not necessarily a good thing if it becomes a bit too much a habit. Um, but there you go. Look, we're going to try and produce content, guys, the best we can. It's going to be a little bit different, so it's a very different approach that we're taking. Gavin is a neighbour of mine. He only lives down the road, so it's a little bit strange... Having to do this so remotely, uh, I'm used to doing lots of WebExes and things through work every day of the week, speaking to people thousands of miles away, but that's not really the case with Surreal Smokers since we are neighbours. But we will endeavour to bring you quick cooks uh, and things to keep you occupied through the lockdown. So here we have our nearly three kilo lump of topside beef. It's a really nice Aberdeen Angus lump perfect for doing uh, built on with. You can use top side, you can use uh, silver side, those are the two main uh, cuts of beef that you would use because they're big lumps of meat, they've got a nice fat content. You don't want too much fat in a, in a piece of uh, meat that you're going to use for making built on because it gets a bit chewy but you do need some uh, of that fat because when it dries it has an awesome and an amazing taste and flavour to it. So anyway let's start preparing this piece of beef. So you want to do some thick, fairly thick slices of this because remember it's going to dry, it's going to lose around about 50% of its size and mass just from drying it out. Remember biltong is air dried beef, okay? It's not like jerky where it's cooked or it's heated up and it's cooked very slowly, it's actually air dried. So you're going to lose a lot of moisture here. So remember if you cut this a centimetre thick it's going to be half that once it's cured. So we've got ourselves a nice sharp knife again and we've got our beef on the, on the chopping board here. What I'm going to do is turn it around and I'm going to slice it that way. So we want to have this maybe, oh, I don't know, about a centimetre, centimetre and a half is probably going to be your ideal thickness. And we want to cut that into some strips. Look at the beautiful richness of that piece of beef. Dark, marbled nicely. That's going to be perfect uh, meat for built on. So even though I've cut this relatively thick, we have got a good number of slices out of this piece of beef. On this piece though, we can see here that it's got a rather hard, white, solid bit of fat. Now that is not going to go down well when it dries. It will just become very tough and very chewy. So we've cut this beef down. They're not very long pieces, but they're certainly thick enough. The thicker you cut it, uh, the longer it will take to dry, obviously. But this will also mean that you get a really lovely, moist piece of built on. This has got a great piece of fat running through it as well which will give it some extra flavour when it dries up. Really happy with that piece. But now it's time to start with the brown, the brown mixture. So now that we've cut that beef it's now time to make the brown mixture. It's a very simple mix. It's brown malt vinegar and Worcestershire sauce. Now obviously in the background we have uh, our seasoning. That is the other part of it uh, but we'll cover that in a minute or two. So Let's get this mixed. You need yourself a nice jug as well just to put it in because then it makes it easier to pour that over the meat. The whole principle of this mixture is to the vinegar will kill any of the harmful bacteria on the meat uh, and the Liam Perrins add some flavour but it also is acting as a marinade to tenderise that beef as well. Remember air drying will make it a little bit tougher. So the quantities of this aren't really sort of that scientific. I like to put in Probably the amount of beef we've got, two cups of brown vinegar. Just standard 
malt vinegar. It doesn't have to be expensive posh stuff, just the straight normal. So then it's time to put the Worcester sauce in. I like to at least go half a cup. Again, it doesn't have to be too accurate doing this, as long as you're there or thereabouts. Be careful here though, because obviously if we match this and put two cups of Worcester sauce to the two cups of vinegar, you're gonna end up with quite a salty mixture. Remember, Liam Perrins is quite salty. I'm oh, sorry, Worcester sauce is quite, quite salty. So we just get a fork and we give that a stir. And that's as simple as that. So again, I'm using our trusty Le Creuset ceramic dish. I just like to use ceramic items. I just find it's a bit cleaner. It's also easy to clean up after you've finished. So it's quite simple. All we need to do is place the beef into the tray. And you can stack it, it doesn't matter so much. So we can put two or three bits in there, get it to fit the best you can. Doesn't matter if you push it around and scrunch it a little bit because it's, it's gonna get, uh, get the covering on that. So in this case, we're gonna have three bits on the bottom. Get our brown mix and put a liberal amount of that over the top. Now remember, we've got to put more in there, so don't go pouring it all in. So then what we can do is stack some more on top, and then what we'll do is we'll pour the remainder of our brown mix over the top. And it really is as easy as that. Now all we need to do is cover that in foil and put it in the fridge. Now, there's a lot of different methods on this, so you could put it in the fridge for a one to two hours, three hours, four hours. Really, I like to leave it in there a good 12 hours. It gives the meat a really deep flavor. That vinegar and the Worcester sauce imparts massive amounts of flavor and gives you that really traditional uh, built-on flavor. So let's cover this up, we'll get it into the fridge, and I'll see you tomorrow evening. So it's been a little over 24 hours since we put our uh, beef in the brown mixture. It's been in the fridge overnight. I have actually, uh, at eight o'clock this morning, uh, 12 hours into the marinating, turned that beef around. So I took the stuff that was on the bottom and put it on the top and vice versa. So I have done that. So now it's all about getting it out of that brown mixture. We need to dry it off slightly and then we can apply our seasoning. Now, you can make your own seasoning. It's very, very simple. There's three main ingredients to biltong seasoning. The basics, a bit like the SPG, we have salt, we have black pepper, but as peppercorns, and also lots of uh, coriander seed. But also you can buy uh, from South African shops, Crown National, which is a very, very popular brand of biltong seasoning, ready-made, it's dead easy, it's not particularly expensive, and you get quite a lot of mileage out of this. But as you know, the Surrey Hill Smokers, we like to try and do things ourselves. This batch of biltong, I'm actually gonna be using the Crown National Safari seasoning, which is this one. I can highly recommend it. It's a really great flavor profile and it adds a little bit different, but that's the whole idea with Biltong. Get the basics, then start building on that with uh, other things like chilies and you know other flavorings in those seasonings. So it's time to get that beef out of the dish. It's been marinating long enough, as I've said. So we don't want to dry it off completely because we want a little bit of moisture on there so the seasoning will stick. But the first thing is get it out of the, uh, out of the tray and just dry it off enough to get the worst of the, or the majority of the vinegar and, and Worcester sauce mix off. I'm just using a secondary tray here just because I want to use my uh, initial tray once I've dried it off to put the seasoning on and then take it out to the biltong box and get it hung up. Don't be afraid to let this be a little bit damp. It needs a bit, as I say, it needs a little bit of moisture on it to allow the seasoning to stick. But we want to be really liberal with that, that seasoning when we actually, uh, when we actually put it on you don't want to spare any flavour that it's going to impart onto the meat. So we've patted the meat dry and now it's time to get it seasoned. So it's very, very simple. We just put it into the pan. I've rinsed this out and just dried it out with some kitchen towel. We don't need to be too uh, worried about it because obviously it's already had the meat in it. I just like to use it because it's easy to, to keep it. So let's get, let's get this start, the seasoning started. So we want to be quite liberal. We want to rub it in. We want to get that covered all over. Flip it over and do the same on the other side. Remember, you want to get those spices to stick, so pat it down, don't be afraid to push it into the meat. Get it to suck up all of those herbs and spices. Now that we've got the beef all covered in the seasoning, um, it's, it smells, firstly, absolutely amazing. Um, now we need to put meat hooks into it. Now these are stainless steel uh, standard hooks uh, that can be bought on Amazon or any online uh, vendor. But as long as they're stainless steel, it actually, if you haven't got these and your pieces of meat aren't particularly heavy, you can actually use plastic coated uh, paper clips as well. 
I wouldn't use them for more than one go, but as long as they've got plastic coating on them, uh, those colourful ones, they do work quite well. I ran out of clip hooks last time I was making biltong, and I actually had to use them, and it worked really well. Just don't try and use it if the meat's quite heavy, uh, the cuts are thick and a bit heavy, because it will just rip out of the meat, and you'll end up with a bit of a mess in your biltong box. But I do recommend these uh, stainless steel uh, hooks. I can put a link in uh, to Amazon in the UK, so you can find where to buy these. So it really is as simple as finding the, 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 the thin end or the thick end, whichever way around you want to do it, it doesn't really matter. I normally have the pointy end at the top, stick it through and away you go. There's your piece of beef with the meat hook through it. So I'm just going to continue on now, get all the hooks in here and next time you see us we'll be in the, uh, in the garage with the built-on box loading it up. So welcome to the Surrey Hill Smokers HQ1 garage. Yes, the garage. That's the main reason you make in Biltong, you put it in the garage. First of all, it's a bit cooler than being in the house, so it's actually going to allow that uh, beef to cure correctly and not too fast. If it goes too fast, it's going to become dry and tough and a bit like shoe leather, which is never a good thing and a bit of a waste of money, quite frankly. Secondly, also, the smell. It's not a bad smell, don't get me wrong. It is a fantastic smell but your whole house will stink of it when you're curing this. Bear in mind this process takes from, you know, if it's thinly cut, maybe two to three days, or if it's, you know, how hard, you know, how dry you want it, it can take up to five, six days. I like ours moist, so it's around about four or five, and you can learn by the feel of how squidgy it is, I suppose, is the best way. So let me introduce you to the next star of Surrey Hill Smokers, the Biltong Box. I made this myself. It didn't take long. In fact, it took me less than a day with my son's help and he's only six uh, to make this it encompasses a light bulb for a bit of heat and it's got a fan at the top uh, just a regular PC fan which you can regulate by a, uh, a voltage on a adapter so I've got it set it about the right way there's a bit of doweling in there and there's some holes in the bottom so the air comes in from the bottom the bulb heats it up and it draws out through the top what this does is you give it a constant flow of air across that beef to then dry it out so enough about the Biltong box, I will do a separate video on how to make one. Uh, we're just about to enter into the lockdown here in the UK, so that's why it's just me doing this one, because obviously Gavin's at his house doing his social distancing and being locked in, and I'm at mine. So over the next few days, I'll probably put together a video on how to make your own Biltong box, which probably be quite good for you guys to keep yourselves occupied. Anyway, let's get that Biltong into the Biltong box. This is not a difficult process, it's very easy, you just get your, your uh, beef. I'm going to stand on a step because I'm a little bit short, and this is quite high up. It's to stop my son fiddling with it. No, what am I joking about with? Uh, let's get that biltong in. So we need to put the beef in. I've lined it with a bit of tissue as well because obviously it's going to be slightly moist still from that uh, brown mixture. But what the main thing is to do is to make sure that the biltong goes in, but doesn't touch the sides or other, other parts of meat. Because what will happen is you'll end up with dry spots on it, and then it will be horrible. Um, you need it to be having air freely available to circulate around it. So I would always put the bigger bits at the back because obviously it's going to be a little bit warmer, uh, being closer to the bulb. The next few bits are a lot thinner because they were the different parts of the beef that were smaller. So we can put those together at the front where it won't get so much heat off that light bulb. Now it's only a 40 watt light bulb so it's not a huge amount of uh, heat coming off of it. But it is enough just to add a little bit of warmth once the door is shut to help with the curing of that uh, that biltong. And I can tell you now, this smells absolutely phenomenal. It's, it's making me hungry just smelling it. And that's it folks, it's as simple as that. The biltong's in there, it'll probably be in there for around about four or five days, so we'll check back in on it. Um, I might do some small videos every other day, just so you can see what the stages of it look like uh, and get a real good understanding of how to gauge when that biltong's right. So, from me, I'll see you on the next little video, which will be in about a day's time, and we'll have a look and see how the Biltong's getting on. Stay tuned. So, it's been five days, uh, and the Biltong's now ready. It took a little bit longer because some of the pieces, as we saw when I cut it, were quite thick. Uh, you've got to get it down to a certain level of dryness. Now, in our household here, we don't like it bone dry. Five days has given us a good dryness, but it's still a little bit moist on the inside. Um, the keener eyed of you might notice there's not quite as much biltong as there was that went into the cabinet because we have been eating some of it. In fact, three of the smaller slices got eaten in the last few days. Um, but that aside, 
it's, it's now done and ready. So let's bring you in closer and you can get a look at this. You can see we've got a nice firm and stiff. The best way to tell if the biltong's ready or not is to squeeze it. It should have a little bit of give in it, which means it's just a little, a little bit of moisture in it. But as you can see, we've got the coatings all beautifully stuck on there. It's really, really looking amazing. It smells awesome and has got that very distinctive built-on flavour. So let's get those hooks out and we'll cut up a slice and get you in to have a look and see what this looks like. So you do need to be quite careful when cutting it because it's quite stiff. Make sure you've got a nice sharp knife with a decent solid blade. You don't want anything too flimsy because it might bend or twist. The first bit's always going to be the trickiest. Look at that cut. And there we go, we can start to see that familiar sort of look inside. Now you can really cut this in any thickness you like. I like it sort of a medium thickness on the slices. You can go thin. You can also get dedicated built-on cutters, uh, which are basically a nice wooden chopping board with a sharp blade on it. I just prefer to do it with a proper knife. So here we go. We have a beautiful slice of built-on there. The distinctive dark ring on the outside with the pink in the centre. So let's give it a taste and see what it tastes like. Perfect. It's got that hardened, crispy texture on the outside, soft in the centre, full of flavour though. You get the beefy taste of it, you get the taste of all the spices and herbs. Absolutely awesome. This won't last long. It never does in this house. So, there you go. How to make your own authentic South African biltong in Surrey. Well, wherever you are in the world. It's so easy, give it a shot. It really, you just gotta be a bit patient with it, but it's so, so simple and easy. You'll never go out and buy it again because you'll realize how cheap it is actually to make it and you can then eat a lot of it. It's a really good snack as well. My son absolutely loves it. I don't have a problem with it because it's healthy. It's not full of, you know, chemicals. It's not full of sugars. It is what it is. It's raw meat, it's high protein. It's a really healthy snack, as I say. Also, we've got quite a lot here. Don't worry about that. You don't have to worry about it going off. You could leave it out uh, if you want to keep it somewhere cool and dry. It actually freezes really well. So you take a piece, put it in a Ziploc bag, and then away you go. You can stick it in the freezer. And I find actually sometimes it develops the flavour better. Anyway, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you again in the next video. Hopefully when we're out of lockdown.